Introducing the undisputed champion of toasting, Brother Hot Tim. Bring him out, bring him out. Bring him out, bring him out. Bring him out, bring him out. All right, before we start this toast, I want to celebrate because we talk about, you know, we make a toast. So, in the toasting process, for those who don't know, we salute the past, we empower the present, and we welcome the future, right? Part of my future, uh, Miss Gina G. Today is her birthday, right? So those of you that be watching, if you see Gina G, you know what I'm saying, you be with, you know, you and the family, you see my little baby, make sure you tell her happy birthday. Um, so we're going to do a nice little toast. Shots out to Brother Kwame. Shots out to Elder Shedrick Sherman Sanders. Good God Almighty. What you doing up this, uh, well, you probably up this early anyway. But hey, um, I want to send shots out to you. We about to do these, uh, this toast. Uh, this toast libation. All right, but um, it's something I wanted to cover before. So, and it's kind of strange that Elder Cedric, you are psychic, man. Cause now you gonna you uh. All right, so y'all know that um, I'm doing the 21 day challenge, and on the challenge this month, I'm working on financial mastery, and um, <coughs> it's not really working at this point in time. You know what I'm saying? I take that back. I'm doing better. Okay? I'm doing better. So that's all we can do. We take a step at a time, right? We we move a little bit at a time. So um but part of the Guza Saba challenge is looking at some of the folk tales that was left by our ancestors, some of the proverbs that was left by our ancestors. Great Ujamas. Thank thanks, Brother Kwame. Great Ujima to each and every last one of y'all. Today is Ujima, right? Um, which is cooperative economics. You know what I'm saying? Let's get our mind up because I I definitely got I got I got something for today, right? This is for all those Godfather fans like myself, right? We about to break this. We're gonna break some shit down this morning. This morning, right? Um cooperative economics. Um the meiotic principle that we're going to be looking at today is reciprocity. Um, for the Millennium Seven, ah, I left it upstairs, but I got my little my little dog tag upstairs, and today is gratitude at the school. So, you know, like I said, we try to line the principles. Every day we focus on certain principles. So one of the principles that we can focus on, if you or you want to focus on all of them, is gratitude, which is a very powerful principle, right? Which, which... I suggest that you show some gratitude today. Be grateful for what you have. Um, the color for the day is green. Um, the hermetic law is polarity. All right? This is a powerful day. I mean, every day is powerful, but I, I love the day. Um, if you was born on Ujima, right, your male name in a current tradition would be Yao. Female name, Ya. Now, I, I want to point out, this is the only name um, in the system that starts with Y. Both of them, male and female. And we, we discussed that a while ago, right? So now, the principles in Warloff for the day, one, two, three, four. This is from the Emotional Emancipation Circles. And I need to know when they meet. Brother Kwame, if you could let me know when the next time y'all meet. Because I, you know, I definitely want to get involved with that. One, two, three, four. Your mandate, which means compassion for those less fortunate than yourself. Um, a kind ethics, one, two, three, four. Patience is the word of the day. Uh, traditional Yoruba, uh, attributes of good character, one, two, three, four. Emoji, emoji mora, sensitivity. All right? So, so. Back to what I was talking about. So y'all know I'm on a 21 day um, challenge, right? Um, and in the challenge, I have to go through African folk tales. Usually, um, I was using um, the tales that I read, uh, uh, Aesop fables, right? I ain't did that, did the show in a while, but I keep up with my fables. 
But I found an old book in my library called African Folk Tales by Roger D. Abrams. And I started really reading this book. I had this book for years. Every now and then I would pull a story out and read it. But I decided to go on and use a 21-day challenge to push through the book. So this is the second cycle of um, the Saba Challenge, right? I've been on Saba Challenge somewhere around 30-some-odd days, right? First one, we, we worked on the fasting. This one, we're working on tracking the finances, right? Doing a better job of tracking the finance, financial mastery, right? So that I can at least get control of my finances. It's funny I'm talking about that on Ujima, right? So I'm reading through this book, and um, I made it to the chapter called The Trickster. It's called Tales of Tricksters and Other Ridiculous Creatures, Tales to Entertain. All right. So, he going through and he describing the stories that, that's going to be told, and he describes the, the strangeness of the stories, right? And he says, um, this dude is uh, Alan Dundas, has noticed a character, characteristically African patterning, um, patterning, oh my God, patterning of tales of this sort, discussing them in terms of progression from contract, friend, or family, to a deception, a violation of contract, and dissolution of the bond. And everything it stands for. Alright, now I want y'all to check this out. I want y'all to check this out because these are, in a sense, some ancient tales. And these this, this is a motif that rolls through our folk tales. Um, some of them. Especially ones dealing with tricksters. Um, so, let's go back. It says... Discussing them in terms of a progression from contract, friendship, or family to a deception, a violation of contract, and a dissolution of the bond and everything it stands for. Alright? Lee Herring, in parallel study of narrative, independently notices that both in black Africa and among Afro-Americans, one can see a pattern of false friendships that leads to a contract the violation of the contract, a series of deceptions, and finally escape. Perhaps it is the last factor, the failure to punish the transgression, transgressor, which most strongly departs from our notion of story. All right. Now, what they're talking about that in a lot of these tales, in a lot of folk tales that we run across, we got individuals that form contracts, that, that, that have a contract, right? Um, whether it was through friendship and family, then they deceive, they violate the contract, and then they dissolute, then, then there's a dissolution of the bond, or people fall out, and everything, and everything it stands for, so they just fall out, right? But the transgressor in a lot of our folk tales always gets away, we always let them go. Um, next EEC meeting will be Saturday, September 2nd. 27 okay all right i got it i got it cool i will i will be there um, i'm quite sure we'll talk that morning before it goes down right so in a lot of our stories and one of the things that make african folk tales a little bit different is the factor the failure to punish the transgressor which most strongly departs from the notion of story right in other cultures, transgressors, in other culture stories, transgressors are always punished. We always let them go. Is that problematic? I mean, because the folk tales, like I said, culture is an important thing. Is it problematic, right? That individuals can violate contracts. This, you know what I'm saying? Violate family and friendship contracts. And there's no consequence. We ain't like, cause like when you read some of these stories, some of the stuff that some of these people be doing, or some of these animals be doing, or some of these these tricksters be doing and be getting away with, is uh kind of extreme, right? So now in the folk tales, even in our folk tales, we're very forgiving, very forgiving. And the only reason that I'm bringing this up is right, culturally, culturally, right. We have shown that we are a very forgiving people. We know this, right? But should that be was 
Should that forgiveness, should the level of forgiveness that we practice be used strictly within the culture? What happens when a culture or a group of people just forgive everybody for everything? You know what I'm saying? There's no debt. You know what I'm saying? Now, a lot of, we know we're living in a society that is built on debt. Hell, shit. You know what I'm saying? Jay-Z said it in the song. You know what I'm saying? You know, boom, credit. What is credit? Credit is based on debt. You know what I'm saying? We live in a society where debts can't be forgiven. Debts have to be repaid. Regardless of how culturally we deal with each other, when we're dealing with other people, there are debts that need to be repaid. Now, black folks, what debt is out there for us that needs to be repaid? Right? Or should we just forgive? As if these people are within our culture. And this is the issue. There's, there's nothing wrong with other cultures. Matter of fact, you know what I'm saying? You need to study some other cultures so you understand how people operate. But you also need to know your culture first so that you know how to deal with the world. Most of us, because we're operating outside of our culture, we're thrown into a limbo to where we believe that everybody is the same. Everybody operates the same. When people don't operate the same. This is why we often have clashes. This is often why um, we might get the short end of the stick. Because while we're forgiving, everybody else is keeping a, keeping a ledger. Right? You know, one of the things that, that constantly haunts me is that as African Americans here, you know, this don't this don't pertain to you if you are a Moor. This don't pertain to you if you are a Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? This don't pertain to you. Right? If you if if the Native American side overtakes everything else. So close your ears. Right? But those of us that was in captivity. Those of us that was part of the forced labor group, those of those, those of us who was part of the group that was kidnapped, right? We have been out of slavery less than we might. We haven't even been out of captivity fifty percent the amount of time that we was in. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is a debt that has not been paid. And a lot of a lot of us is talking about forgiving it or forgetting it and, and letting it go. Hell with that. Hell with that. No, no, no. We can't. We can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not dealing in our cultural paradigm. We was dealing if the world was working on our cultural paradigm, sure. Let's forgive. But the world is not working on our cultural paradigm. It's working on a West Asian cultural paradigm. They don't let shit go. Try not to pay your mortgage. Try not to pay your rent. Right? Y'all know. Some of y'all had, I you know, I don't woke up and had cars gone because I didn't pay, right? Come on now, we got to deal, we got to deal within the cultural framework that we're existing in, and we got to understand that all people don't work with us. You know what I'm saying? We need to practice the forgiveness within our culture, right? But when we dealing with other cultures and we dealing with other groups, we got to understand there's a ledger because, like for example, <clears throat> any product, whether it's an emotional product, a spiritual product, a physical product, right? If you allow it to flow out of your borders, right? There must, there must flow out of you. When you allow things to flow out your borders, there needs to be a return coming from whoever you're making a trade with. You understand what I'm saying? So if we allow things, like if we allow forgiveness, forgiveness is a product. You know what I'm saying? We're good at creating forgiveness we allow forgiveness to go out but we don't trade anything for it what are we getting when we throw the forgiveness out what's coming back into our borders right we need to learn how to manage borders right america don't let shit out this country without knowing how what they're getting back right it's called balancing the trade right you know, either we're allowing a lot of stuff to just be extracted out and taken out for free, or we're allowing a lot of garbage just to come in. 
And we need to go home and put up the cultural fence so that we can start controlling and maintaining. Determining. All right? All right, so now, what I was going to talk about, my phone is back up, so, but I want y'all to look at this picture. Uh, y'all see what that is? That's a gun. All right. So, um, last night, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm surprised I'm not feeling sluggish. Last night, I had to go out so that I could have a meeting about a show that I'm going to be working on. So, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing right now, set for the toast, is going to kind of be put on hold because we're going to be developed. We're going to be moving into doing an actual video project, right? I got, you know, got a group of people that I'm working with. But last night, um, one of the episodes that we're talking about doing is um, truly having a discussion, an entertaining discussion, uh, entertainment or edutainment discussion around around what is the left and the right because we hear these terms when people talk about politics you know when I say the left some of us could say a certain group of people I say the right some of us could say another group of people right but the issue is that I'm running into is that if you sit down and you talk with people and you get into a discussion about left and right people can't really tell you what they stand for you know what I'm saying? It's like we could we could identify what's the left because people are telling us what the left is. A lot of us, we don't understand what the left is. We don't understand what the right is. We just understand that if more than likely if you're Republican, you're to the right. You're conservative. If you are Democrat, you are more to the left than a liberal. You know what I'm saying? Then you got those centrists. What the hell is that? Right. So so one of the pieces we're going to be dealing with is how to help people identify what that is. Now, what does that have to do with the gun? So I'm looking for a definition for politics. Right. You know, what I'm saying something I could work with. And I just happen to run across one of my favorite movies, The Godfather. But this is my less favorite Godfather movie which had the best quote, I think, about politics, okay? Godfather Part 3, which was, I don't want to sit down and watch it again. I'm just being honest. I, 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 I went to it out of respect for the first two. Um, I didn't like Godfather Part 3. Brother, I tell him why you didn't like it. Uh, y'all know, I know y'all be like, Brother, I tell him you talk to yourself, right? Brother, I tell him why didn't you like it. I didn't like Godfather Part 3 because it was less about building, you know what I'm saying, and more about seeking redemption, right? And I didn't think that a movie of the caliber of Godfather should be seeking redemption, right? Um... Redemption in the, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's like he trying to lie. You got to see the movie, right? It was, it was for me, he kind of messed up, messed up the series. Well, anyway, in there, in there, you have Don Corleone, well, who was Michael Corleone at that point in time, the godfather's son who was running the entire family, who had moved the family into legal endeavors. And he had a, a nephew named Vincent Mancini who wanted to take the family over and basically become gangster. He wanted to stay gangster. So you got the elder who's trying to move into legitimate stuff. You got the young man who want to take the family into back into the whole gangster shit, right? They ran into a big businessman out of Italy. Who the older Don Corleone has find is finding out that he has beef with, right? So this this older politician gangster dude tries to recruit the young man, and he has a discussion with him. So the young man goes up to him and he says, uh, "Don," I mean, he says, "Don Lucchese, you uh, you into the world of 
finance or politics. I don't understand these things. So this older dude, this elder, looks at the young man and he says, hmm, do you understand guns? He said, yes, I understand guns because the boy is a gangster. He said, okay, cool. Finance is a gun. Politics is knowing when to pull a trigger. Finance is a gun. Politics is knowing when to pull a trigger. And I said, damn, that's a, that, that's a nice description of politics. It don't necessarily, necessarily, necessarily tell you what politics is, but it tells you what politics does. And since we are, I felt that would be appropriate, appropriate little segue, since <clears throat> we are on Ujima, right? We're on Ujima. It's about resources, right? We could replace finances with resources. Resources is a gun. Politics is knowing when and how to pull the trigger, right? A lot of us, because we're not politically adept, because we don't understand, and including myself, right? There's a lot of trigger pulling going on around us that we don't really understand, right? And I think it's about time that a lot of us start looking into this stuff. So, you know, like I said, that's why I want to move a little bit in toward towards what, what this is. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. I'm going to continue doing the, the toast. I'm going to continue making it ambrosia. I'm going to continue talking about the, 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 the whole life care thing. You know what I'm saying? The whole life care piece, the whole Giami journey thing, right? But I'm going to move a little bit more with this group. To start helping people get a better understanding of the things that affect our lives a little bit more direct. Well, I mean, not more directly, but affects our lives. So now, let's get into it. As y'all see before you, right here, right? I got two batches going of the ambrosia in this time to sample. As you can see, that one got a little bit of the um, SCOBY floating in it. This one is not quite as active. This is the red cap. This one ready. Yeah. This one kind of hit me in the back of the throat. I'm going to get this one another day. So I'll start producing the red. So some of your orders will be coming up real soon. So why is that the NWC doesn't want to pull the trigger on the NFL? Oh. <laughs> Because they don't have the finances. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or they're trying to get finances. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I mean, because really, with a lot of our organizations, right? A lot of our organizations that represent our interests are financed by others. So if they are financed by others, they're not really pulling the trigger. They got other people with the gun pointed at them, right? Well, they either, either pull the trigger to give them money or not. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, when you have an organization that is a, a non-profit that is funded by others, see, because this is what we got to understand. Dr. Kelsey made it very clear to us when we were young that, listen, your enemy will never pay for you to be free. It's stupid. You know what I'm saying? If they give you any money, they will only give you enough money to fail. I'll never forget when he told us that. We working in programs, you know, where we trying to help the community and boom, 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 we're doing all we can, you know what I'm saying? We young, you know what I'm saying? We got the spirit, we feel good, and we come into the meeting, you know what I'm saying? And, and Dr. Kelsey just one day, he, he just let us know. He said, listen, fam, look, they're only going to give us enough, you know what I'm saying? They're, not, they're only going to give us enough money to fail, so we got to make do with what we have and push beyond, Right? This is why certain people were so dedicated at, at, at the, in the early years of APDS that we would work for. We would work for a long time, without, you know what I'm saying, and pay, pay would be late, right? What's the saying about having others leading our revolution? I mean, there is no saying about having others, others leading our revolution. Shit, there is no revolution if others is leading. <laughs> it's a devolution if other people, you know what I'm saying, you can't, we can't. We can't depend on others to get for us. You know what I'm saying? What we need to get ourselves. I tell my boys, I tell my, I tell my people all the time, my young men that I'm working with. I said, listen, 
Geomi is ours. Geomi Journey is ours, right? Geomi Journey is something that we created. You know what I'm saying? And nobody will respect it more than you. Nor should they. This is our culture. You know what I'm saying? This is our freedom we're talking about. Nobody else is going to take care of it, respect it more than you. Nor should they. You know what I'm saying? If I could walk in your house and disrespect your house, if I come to your house and just mess the shit up whenever I want and leave, why should I respect that shit? Why shouldn't I do it? Understand. What's up, Brother Hazir? You know what I'm saying? There is. You can never be free by somebody else financing your freedom because now you're beholden to them. This is why in the early, when you look at the American Revolution, this is why they only took so much from France. Right? I mean, even they know this shit. We the only motherfuckers that think that we can actually get more. I mean, oh, I got this. I got this $100 million contract. You know what I'm saying? Playing sports, we're going to get free. Wait. What sense do it make? See, because, I mean, we got to really start thinking. We got to really start thinking. What sense does it make for me to pay you enough money so that you could be free? If we look back, if we look back in slavery, right? If we look back in slavery, right? There was black folks in slavery that ran their own business. Do you did you do, do y'all do, do we understand this? I mean, do you do do we understand that a lot of the shit that we're doing Except you take the computers on shit like this. A lot of the things that we're doing, staying up late, kicking it, getting up, going out to the, you know what I'm saying, going to work, you know what I'm saying, doing dumb shit, you know what I'm saying, I'm just, I'm be boom, boom, boom. A lot of the same shit that we're doing today, we was doing on plantations. A lot of it. You know what I'm saying? We had business, there was business owners. You know, boom, he, he master allowed him to have business. Master allowed you to have a garden. Master allowed you to have those days on. Come on, man. So, you know, I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, until, until we start understanding the power of our culture and start living culturally in a culturally appropriate ways, we'll never be free. I was listening to Amos Wilson the other day, man. And Amos Wilson said something that kind of blew my mind. I mean, every time I listen to this dude, man, and you know, I just, I be finding him, and I know I already heard heard him. I said, well, maybe this is a new one. But every time I turn on his shit, I hear something new. Amos Wilson, if you're not hip to him, get hip to him. Amos Wilson said, banks are not for us. I said, what? What did he say? He said, banks don't fit into our cultural framework. How are you going to get free putting your money into the institution that helps to keep you enslaved? I know a lot of y'all going to be like, oh. see, because some of y'all take some shit too far. Brother I Tim said, we shouldn't, I shouldn't put my money in the bank. All right, cool. All right, whatever. But I want you to understand this, right? Because when you put your money in the bank, what they do with your money? Right? They pay you. 2% if they even pay that much. They pay below interest, which means if you put your money in the bank today and go back in 10 years, you gonna, your, your money is going to be worth less than when you put the shit in the bank, period. Now, but they take your money and they invest the money in all this corrupt shit that's going on around the world and they flip it and the money that you put in the bank, they make about 30% off. As a matter of fact, for every dollar that you put in, they are able to leverage that dollar and use it as if it's more. I can't remember more. Something like seven times more or something like that. It could be less, but you know what I'm saying. So they're able to leverage your money. It's your money. And they're able to leverage and invest it and raise the money to keep them rich and keep you broke. Right? And then we got the, I mean, and this is what's crazy to me, right? So we got these these white nationalists running around here. These motherfuckers mad and wanting to fight and wanting to blame everybody but the people that they need to really blame. Because what's, what's crazy to me is, right, they feel that they're doing a little bit better than us or they should be doing better than us, right? 
You know what I'm saying? We about one, some of us maybe two, and some of us, you know, maybe three paychecks away from total oblivion. You know what I'm saying? They about 13 checks away from oblivion. You know what I'm saying? They mad at us. And they mad at the gangs, supposedly the gangs that we got, when we need to be looking at some of them and helping redirect some of that anger. You know what I'm saying? This, this shit is ridiculous. He said, shit, up to 50. And so, oh, so you could you could leverage it up to 50. So they take the $1 that we give them, turn around and invest in corruption. <laughs> they invest in corruption. They invest in, 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 uh, uh, they invest in companies that are producing corruption and chaos all over this planet. Make money back and then give you a little bit of change back. How you going to get free? By investing in something like that. They're going to keep your money safe. When we have traditions. Like when we look at the susus and stuff like that. When we have when we have traditions. Where we're able to produce large amounts of money. Within our groups. But we don't. We're not, we're not looking into culturally appropriate things. We don't want to eat culturally appropriate food. We don't want to do shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool. Alright. I ain't even started drinking my water, Kwame. man. I'm sorry, brother. Alright, brother. How's it in? Thanks for the compliment. So we're going to drink this water. I'm going to get up out of here because y'all know I got to get to this. You know, I got to get to my adventure, man. I love being able to walk through the halls and see my kids, man. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing, right? To be in a situation where I can see our future and I can whisper to our future, right? I can whisper to them, right? And what I'm praying for is the day to where I no longer have to whisper to them. Where the day will come, where we are able to set up the the curriculum and have a curriculum geared towards what they need and what we need, rather than what everybody else needs. Do you, I mean? Do, I mean, we don't. It's crazy. We don't even see this, right? We don't see it. We don't see the fact that we are preparing our children to benefit somebody else's future, not ours. We're educating our children to run away from us. Oh, run off to college. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about us. It's about you. We educating our children to move away, to get away from us. Oh, they got to go to school and get the knowledge. That's bullshit. Listen, this is the new university. Y'all behind. This is the new university, right? You can learn particle physics on this motherfucker. You can learn fractal geometry on this motherfucker. And Kwame, I'm holding up the cell phone. Right? I need you to understand that. Your, you, your child can learn anything right now. As a matter of fact, at 5 a.m., I'm going to wake Cleve's ass up so he can continue doing his HTML, learning HTML and CSS. he been on it all summer, and I'm getting very suspicious, right? He was supposed to be on another language. He's on HTML and CSS right now, learning how to do it, right? I see he like to play games and shit. I'm like, yo, boom, you about to get up and start learning how to make them damn games. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you, somebody got to learn the language. You know, shit, you live here. You know, I'm taking care of everything else. You gonna learn this language. You gonna learn how to farm, right? I gave him a mission. Family, start giving your children missions, right? You got a mission. What is the mission that you sent your child back to school with this year? Now, if they, like like Gina right now, I'm going to give her a lightweight mission. But Steve Cleveland got a very important secret mission that he has to accomplish. What's the mission you set for your children? What's the mission you set for yourself? Right? What's the mission? You know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to drink this while I'm going to drink one of them because I did, did a lot of talking. I'll drink the rest of them behind the scenes, right? But y'all understand what I'm saying, family, right? We, see, because it's not as, it, we're, it, the situation is not as bad. The way, yeah, it can be. But it's not as bad as a lot of us may think. It's just a matter of us making a small cultural shift 
in our thinking. Right? Being able to look at others and be like, yo, motherfucker, you owe me. I don't know why y'all talking. I don't understand how y'all can sit up there and talk about me taking responsibility when you owe me. Be bold enough to say this. I, I don't understand it. Be bold enough to be like, listen, if we know that our children are going to these schools already behind, you know what I'm saying? What's the fucking rush? And Ms. Wilson said, this shit in the 80s. What's the fucking rush? Right? You got Now you got white boys hit millions of hits saying that the education system is broke. And Ms. Wilson said that shit back in 1986. And probably before that. He said, who says that a child has to be, be able to do algebra by 12? Who says? What if they learn differently? We know our children learn differently, but why are we trying to make them fit into a, 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 a box that wasn't even developed by you or your ancestors? Do you not understand that your, that, that your ancestors and that your culture set up boxes to make sure that your culture exists? So this is my question. Whose box are we putting our children in and whose culture and whose future are we allowing them to be trained to protect? And to build up. It's just a matter of us having a cultural shift. It's, it's just that simple. Us first. Nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. You do it every time you get paid. You first. No, you don't do it. My father, I take that back. You pay all your other. My father, let, let me. You take care of the shit you need so that you can live. The point that I'm trying to make is, family, we got to start dealing from us first. There's nothing wrong with it. If I'm not taking care, if I can't take care of me, I can't take take care of Gina. You understand what I'm saying? I can't take care of I can't take care of nobody if I don't take care of me first. Me and me as a me as an individual, me as a culture. Our culture. If I'm not taking care of us, if I'm not taking care of getting this together, I can't help nobody else. So as a group, we got to do the same. If we're not taking care of us, we can't take care of nobody else. All right, all right I'm sorry. Let me drink my water and get this damn toast on. That's eight ounces. Trust me to get my other 24 before I get done because I got to do my workout. And I still got to, uh, I'm kind of behind on my. My writing because I've been thinking about this thing. So we lift up our glass. This one is red. We lift up our glass to our creator by whatever name you choose, call it creator. We call on that great energy to bless guide us. You know what I'm saying? We we call on that that energy to strengthen us. We call on that energy to enlighten us. We call on that energy to move within us and around us and to touch each and every being because we know that we are parts of a web and all of us are connected, right? All of us are connected. We lift up our glass. We lift up we lift up our glass and, and we understand that in that connection, right? We are closely connected. But we have to understand that we have our area in which we are connected. When we're not operating as who we are, we affect the whole web. So we lift up our glass to our creator and we say our shame. From there we move to our personal ancestors. We lift up our glass and we remember those who came before us. We remember those who made it possible for us to be up in the early morning or the afternoon or whenever you're watching this. We, we, we lift our glass up to those individuals who worked in those factory jobs to make sure that we were able to get the education that we needed at that time. Right? We lift up the glass to those that was able to help get us to understand some of the mad problems that we were struggling with or, or, or help us to overcome and, and make it past some of those rough words that scared us, right? When we was in those classes. We lift up the glass to those individuals who took the time to read to us. We lift up our glass and we, we, we thank our ancestors, right? We remember our ancestors. We uplift our ancestors. We send our ancestors energy. So I'll start with my family line. Family, start with yours. Miles Brown, Ms. Ann, Robert and Texana Davis, Homer Brown, Sing, Rosalie, Tilly, Georgia, William Walton, Chris and Fanny Gatson, Aunt Lena, Aunt Fee, Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, 
Marvin Ellis, Wash Ellis, Cecil Ellis, Katie Ellis, Avira Brown, Gina Gaines, Wash Ellis Jr. Ah, Nikki Ellis. Making sure I got all of the. All right, cool. John Falar, Jamon Jones, Montague Pimpinel, Jeremiah Tappet, Normal X, Spat Maad Rye, Dr. Marianne Williams, Kojo Kamal, Terrell Dunbar, Elder Farmer. Elder Harrison, Elder Farmer, Elder Millie Dixon, that's all I could think of today, we lift it up, we say, Ashe. from there we salute this moment, we already spoke about this moment, today is Ujamaa and we will seek it, we will find it. Because it's out there. It's happening in our community, family. Um, cooperative fact is going on, family. You know what I'm saying? We just have to open our eyes so that we can see it. And in some cases, we have to be the ones to kind of jump it off. It's there. All we got to do is bring the energy to life. All we got to do is start learning how to look for it. Rather than looking for what we don't want, we need to start looking for what we do want. You know what I'm saying? That's part of the, that's part of the trick. We've been taught how to look for what we don't want. Right? That's why we be running around stressed all the time, right? We lift up our glass to this moment. Because in this moment is our power. We say our shade from there. We move to our children, our children's children unto infinity. We remember our babies. We remember the fact that whether they're here now or whether they're here in the future, that everything we work on, everything we think, say, and do, everything that we are building towards is for them. So we lift up a glass and we say, I say, from there, I toast you. Thank you for joining me, because I'm gonna, I finally get to take a sip, a little long, slow sip of this Ambrosia, right? And I'm going to get Cleveland so he can start doing his thing. This is one of his things, but he got a secret mission. And and some of y'all elders, older brothers, and people that love him, when you see him, be like, yo, what's your mission this year? See if he tell you. He might tell you, all right? So with that, I say, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. All right, family, I wish you peace, power, joy, and 100 years. And let's keep building. Let's keep moving, right? We are only, we are almost four months out from Kwanzaa. It's going to be an incredible year, 2018. We're going to finish 2017 strong, but 2018 is coming. I can't, oh, I can't wait because I still got work to do in 2017. So with that, I'm out, and I'm saying peace.